What side of the street do you drive on? Because as I'm sure you know, some places drive on the right side like I do, and other people drive on the left side like Chris Helmsworth in Australia. But that's the only difference other than that we're pretty much the same person. Two different systems with different sets of rules, and they both work just fine. There's no evidence that one is any better than the other one. But obviously you can't drive in Australia using the US road system. That would be chaos and madness. There are two systems that work, but they don't work together. Which makes the Lotus Bridge on the border between China and Macau so interesting. In China, they drive on the right, and in Macau, they drive on the left. But this clever little bridge lets people switch sides without having to stop. There are some others out there, but I thought this one was pretty cool. Maybe a little phallic. Now, the physics world faces a similar problem. You have two different sets of physics. There's general relativity and quantum mechanics. The physics of the very large and the physics of the very small. And they both work just fine on their own, but they're completely incompatible with each other. For over 100 years, scientists have been struggling to find their own Lotus Bridge, a connection between these two different types of physics. And there is a new one out there that people have been talking about. It's called quantum gravity. A lot of you people have asked me to do a video about it, so I'm doing it. I'm gonna do the best I can, because some of this is, uh, it's out there. In a video a while back, I asked the question that if a hyper-intelligent alien species came down to Earth, a species that knew everything there was to know, they had all the questions answered, they completely understood the true nature of reality and tried to explain that to us, do you think it would look anything at all like what we currently believe? And the overwhelming response that I got from you guys was no. And honestly, I agree with this. Not that I'm saying that science is wrong or anything or that we're going down the wrong path. I think we're going down the right path, but I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if finding out the true nature of reality required us to put on some different lenses than what we're wearing right now. Something that may be radically different from what we're thinking currently. With that in mind, I wanna get a couple of things uh, clear right off the bat here. And one is that um, I'm open to new ideas. I am perfectly happy exploring these types of ideas on this channel. It does not equate to an endorsement on my part, and it is not me saying that science is currently wrong about this. And the second thing I want to make clear is that uh, I'm grasping maybe about 5% of this. So if any of you have a good understanding of quantum gravity and how this whole thing works and want to explain more in the comments, please do so. So just to back up here, when we're talking about the theory of everything, something that connects the physics of the big and the small, one of the most important ones and one of the best known ones that had come out was string theory. String theory roughly states that at the smallest scales, all matter and all energy are made up of tiny vibrating strings. And depending on what kind of vibrations these strings put out, different particles emerge. Now there's a lot more to it than that, and there's a lot of math, but theoretically it does explain some things. What it hasn't done though, is come up with any testable predictions that have been borne out by evidence, which you kinda need to validate a hypothesis. String theory definitely has its cheerleaders, but it hasn't really been the theory of everything that we were looking for. Which leads me to Garrett Lisi in his paper, An Exceptionally Simple Theory of Everything. Garrett Lisi got his PhD in physics from the University of California, and afterwards decided instead of going into academia, he wanted to go to Hawaii and surf. An interesting character. He was dissatisfied with the state of academia and, and physics focusing mostly on string theory, which he didn't think was the right way to go. So he moved to Hawaii, lived out of a van for a while, taught classes part-time at college, and uh, in the meantime worked on his idea. And in 2006, he introduced this idea to the world. And it looks like this. This is known as an E8 Lee group. Now there's a lot going on here, so let me just back up and try to explain all this. This is a square in 2D space because you only have two dimensions, up, down, and across. Now a cube is a square in 3D space because it includes depth to the equation. But what you can do with a cube is you can project light through it and you can create on the ground a 2D representation of that 3D object. You're basically seeing a shadow of a cube. This is what's called a quasi-crystal. But what about 4D space? What if we added another spatial dimension? Now obviously this isn't something that we can conceive because we live in 3D space, but if you could render down a 4D object to a 3D object, you would get something like this, which is called a tesseract. This is a 3D representation of a 4D object that obviously you are seeing flat in 2D on your screen. Now with that in mind, Lisi started by graphing the fundamental particles of the standard model on a chart, marking the electroweak force, the hypercharge, and charges in the Higgs field. Which, if you don't know what any of that stuff is, just uh, <laughs> uh, get ready for it. But after plotting all the particles in this 3D graph and accounting for different spins, different colors, different flavors, these are all properties of subatomic particles, and throwing the antimatter counterparts to all of them, you get this, often called one of the most beautiful structures in science. 
But this is called E8 for a reason, because it extends through eight dimensions. Just like we rendered that 4D object down to 3D, this is an 8D object that's been rendered down to 4D, which was then rendered down to 3D, and which you are now seeing in 2D on your screen. Now what's cool about this theory is that every single one of the dots in this diagram are fundamental particles of different properties. They just lay out this way and it forms this beautiful design, which is cool. But one of the most exciting things about it is that some of the dots in there, a handful of them, aren't actually real. These dots here, they're ghost particles. They don't really exist. But the geometry has created particles in all these other junctures, so if the theory holds, there should be particles here, but there aren't. So this theory predicts the existence of certain particles of particular masses, charges, and spins right where they're plotted out on this outline, which means this theory is testable. If in the process of smashing particles together at CERN they find some particles with these exact properties, it would help validate this theory. And the thought is that these particles would correlate with gravity, which would provide that bridge between general relativity and quantum mechanics. So we'll see what happens. Now on one hand, this is an elaborate geometrical and mathematical trick that even Garrett Lisi himself says is very small chance it's actually true, but he does think that there's more chance of it being true than string theory. Now all that is interesting enough, but we're just scratching the surface of this whole theory, which is called quantum gravity. And from here we've got to talk about Clee Irwin, a scientist who heads up the Quantum Gravity Research Institute in Los Angeles, and they've taken this E8 idea and gone way deeper with it. Now through all these projections and interpretations, and if you look at it the right way, they theorize that this EH structure goes all the way down to the very smallest levels, to the Planck length, at which point reality breaks down into 3D pixels that they call tetrahedrons. And each of these tetrahedrons exist in one of three states, which constantly change. And when they do change, they affect the tetrahedrons around it, which creates vibrations in the quantum field, which produces the fundamental particles. Or as they say on their Theory for Lay People page, when the fundamental 8D cell of the E8 lattice, a shape with 240 vertices known as the Gossett polytope, is projected to 4D, two identical 4D shapes of different sizes are created. The ratio of their sizes is the golden ratio. Each of these shapes are constructed of 600 three-dimensional tetrahedra rotated from one another by a golden ratio-based angle. We refer to this 4D shape as the 600 cell. The 600 cells interact in specific ways, they intersect in seven golden ratio related ways and kiss in one particular way to form a 4D quasi-crystal. By taking 3D subspaces of this 4D quasi-crystal and rotating them from one to another at a certain angle, we form the 3D quasi-crystal that has one type of prototile, a 3D tetrahedron. Lay people. Listen, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop this right now and just let you know this is, this is way above me. Like normally on this channel, I'm like 80 to 90% sure that I'm in the general direction of what, you know, knowing what I'm talking about. Like I never think I know everything, but I think I'm usually at least 80% sure I'm going in the right direction here. But right now I'm pushing like 40 on this. Like sir, this is a garbage video. I didn't even bother sponsoring it. I just didn't even want this attached to somebody's brand. It would be too damaging to them. I guess when you put out a video 52 times a year, eventually you're gonna eat one. So I'm not even gonna try to explain the technical stuff any further than this. If you wanna find out more about it, I'll put plenty of links down in the description below. You can go check out the Quantum Gravity Institute's uh, YouTube channel. They've got a lot of really cool short films and lectures on there if you wanna get down into it. But I'm just gonna focus on the highlights of what this theory implies. All points in time are connected in a causal loop, meaning the future can affect the past, or as they say it, all time affects all time, all the time. The base pixels of reality are tiny tetrahedrons that are connected to each other in accordance to the golden ratio, which may be the fundamental constant in the universe. And there's an underlying structure to reality that through emergence rose consciousness, which created itself as the universe. <laughs> oh yeah, it's woo woo time. So going off the double slit experiments of John Wheeler, which showed that uh, an observer can collapse the probability wave function of a particle, uh, they proposed that these tiny little uh, tetrahedron pixels that change their states all the time can only change their states through a conscious observer. A conscious observer that they believe to be the universe. That the fundamental substructure of the universe is consciousness itself. This is known as emergence theory. Now these are not new ideas by any stretch, but what the quantum gravity research team is trying to do is put these ideas in the terms of math and science. And they've got a long way to go. This is by no means accepted science at this point. But if particle experiments start to uncover particles that were predicted by Garrett Lisi's work, we may have to consider the fact that the nature of the universe is not at all what we thought it was. Or it might be exactly what we think it is, and it turns out that the theory of everything was staring us in the face all along. 
Either way, it'll be interesting to find out. As for me and what do I think about it, you know, I, I think it's interesting. I would have to spend a lot more time looking into it before I could really make a determination as to whether it's, you know, total BS or not. I will say that some of the things that they talk about on their videos and stuff, I think they make some logical uh, or some leaps of logic that are kind of like they started with the end in mind and kind of found a way to get there. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sold on it yet. But it's something I'll be looking at more into in the future, and I invite you guys to, to do the same. Again, links down in the description. Or if this is something that you've studied uh, quite a bit yourself, and you want to kind of clear the record, or you know, tell me that I'm wrong down in the comments, I guarantee I got something wrong in this video, uh, please do. Share it down below, and we'll see what emerges from that. All right, t-shirts are available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. You can go find one. There are lots of really cool nerdy things. Go check them out. I think you'll like it. Big thanks to the Answer Files on Patreon for supporting this channel and for keeping everything afloat, having a really great community over there, lots of cool stuff going on. We've got some cool uh, new people who have joined the tribe. we got Andre Shepers, Tadas Marajunas, Bobby Paria, Grim Boyens, Jeff Patreon Kent, name himself Patreon, Orhan Etregrol, I think you're just messing with me. Uh, Martin Garcia, Nick Mills, Bill Peckham, Austin Tidwell, Tom Banford, and Gavin Herrera. Thanks you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get access to stuff that other people don't get to get, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, check out some of my other videos. You might like those as well. And if you do, hit subscribe. You'll be the first to see my videos come out every Monday on cool, sciencey and nerdy topics like this. All right, that's enough for now. You guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.